using circle skirts for my daughters. And I'm going to show you today a little bit about the measurements, then how we get them. So the first measurement you're going to need is a waist measurement. So go up and find their belly buttons and wrap your tape around. Try to get it even. Okay. And add the belly button. Okay. <laughs> Okay. You don't want it too tight. You want to give it a little bit of give, but not too much, because you're going to use elastic. And if you give it too much give, it'll just fall off. Okay. And now, for the length, you're going to go from the belly button down to where you want it to fall. And I like my skirts on my daughters to fall just a little bit past the knees. We'll be writing those two measurements down and we'll be putting them into a circle skirt calculator and that will give us our pattern. We're going to get a waist measurement. So we take the tape, thread it around the back, and I like for her skirts to hit at about the waist. <laughs> Alright, okay. And you don't want to get it too tight or she'll be saying ow, ow, ow. You get a pretty good measurement. I'm and fine. Then write, then write it down. Okay. So now we're going to get our length measurement. So we know we started at the belly button. So just write it. Just on the finger now, honey. And go all the way down. Now I like her skirts to go down to her knee. Okay. So that's the other measurement you will need. <laughs> So once you have your measurements, it's time to get started on your pattern. Now, my elastic band that I'm going to be using for the waist is two and a half inches wide. So I'm going to take two inches off my length measurement, and that will help to make sure that it's not too long. So if you happen to have a two and a half inch band, or you happen to have a four inch band, you need to take some of that off of your length measurement or you're going to get a skirt that's longer than you thought you would have. So mine was originally um, 14, so I'm taking it down to 12. Now, um, my daughter's waist measurement was 22. And to get the measurement that you're going to need, I'll just show you real quick here. You, um, it's 22 divided by pi. And that's going to give you your diameter, which is approximately 7 inches. And then you divide that by 2, and that gives you your radius. Okay? So, circumference divided by pi equals diameter divided by 2 equals radius. So that's what you're going to get there. That's how you get your radius. Now, you're going to want a large piece of paper, and it doesn't really matter what kind of paper. I like to use craft paper, and I normally I like to use a longer piece than what I have, um, but this is just what I happen to have on hand. You can also use, like, easel paper. You could use newspaper. You could use wrapping paper. You could use regular paper taped together. As long as you have a big enough space, you're good. So, um, I know that my total, you're going to want your length, plus your radius, so 12 plus um, 3 and a half is 15 and a half. So you're going to want your paper to be at least double what that measurement is. So right here I've got a piece of paper that is 31 inches and I am going to fold it in half. My folding skills should be better. Now we'll take our measure, measuring tape and we'll go and we'll find 15 and a half. Like this. Bring it up, straighten it out. And here we go. Alright. And then because this paper is only 30 inches this way, I can't make a full 
pattern like I would like to, so I have to make a quarter. So that means go up to this spot here. And there's 15 and a half. It just goes right at the edge. Okay. And we've got straight edge or something. Our radius for our waistband, which for me this time is three and a half. So I put the end of my thing, my measuring tape right there, bring it out, and make a mark at three and a half. And then if you've got a protractor or something similar, um, some people like to use their pencil on a string or something like that uh, to help you make these curves. That's great. I don't currently have anything like that, and so I just do it this way. I keep that spot and just move it. given point for a true circle shirt, it should be, in this instance, 12 from this line. If you'd had a long, if I'd had a longer piece of paper that was like another half an inch longer, I would have had an entire circle when I folded this out. But as it is, uh, a half is good. A half should be all you need to work with. Now I like to put the measurements down. Like right now, this is my daughter's, and she's five years old. That 
how you make a simple pattern for your circle skirt. Next, I'll be showing you how to cut out your fabric and my elastic and all that good stuff. So now I'm going to do the exact same process I make my other daughter's pattern. Right. So her radius is 3 and the length was 11 minus C2. Now I have two D patterns. One is approximately um, between a small and a medium, and the other one is about a two C. So this is the fabric that I've chosen to make our skirts out of, and it's this beautiful um, mid-weight um, but it's got a scuba knit and it is super stretchy this way and it's got a little bit of stretch this way. You want to make sure that this stretch is mostly going lay your fabric out.
take your pattern and kind of just lay it on there. And then you're going to want to take this and fold it, double it up right about here. easier to work with a smaller amount. As you can see, there's all my fabric. I'm just going to cut this as straight as I can. like that. Okay. Now we're going to put it, we're going to fold it same size. Okay. people at this point would probably iron this and use a lot of pins, um, but I don't sew that way. I've tried and I just get frustrated, so I just don't do it that way. We're going to put that on here okay, and get it lined up as good as you can up here. something like that, that's great. Use that. I don't have that. I'm just going to go over this very, very lightly. Um, I like to use just a ballpoint pen. If you use a different kind of pen, you may get more bleed. And um, that's just not good. This is a white material, and we don't maybe want it to go through and show on the other side. Although mostly you won't see it because you're going to be cutting along the lines. Another thing I like to use fabrics that don't naturally fray. That way, I don't have to worry about hemming. Because I hate hemming. I hate hemming my edges. 
So I came to choose fabric that if I dump him, they're not gonna they're not gonna unravel. They're not gonna cause me trouble for it. Now I have done some of these um, skirts with non-stretch cotton and that had to be pen. And those skirts are starting to fall apart now, but they have also had about two to two and a half years of use by my little girl as a toddler. So even though I don't think they you know, lasted very good, I don't know, they held up through her playing and getting on them and everything else. And those I did him. I've got another skirt that I made with her from a material that was kind of like a spandex. And I did not have to trim it and it has worn very good. Okay, so now that you're at this point, again, a lot of people are going to tell you that you need to secure this together. I'm not even one of those people. So we're just going to take it up here. And get our stickers. Now, if you're not going to hem, make smoothest cut that you can make. If you are going to hem, you still need to make smooth cuts, but it's okay if they're not perfect. If you stretch fabric, try to make sure that you are not stretching it when you cut. Now another little piece of advice. If, if you're going to be hemming, you probably do want to leave some room for those seam allowances when you're doing your length. is the elastic that I'm going to be using for the waistband. Now, um, this was actually a yard sale find. I'm not sure how much a spool of this would cost online, um, but <laughs> my parents happened, they're huge yard sellers, and they happened to find this along with three other colors and I think they spent 20 bucks 
on all of it, and I've got three other rolls this big in black, navy, and red. But I think this bright blue is going to go really good with this skirt. Okay, we're going to get the other skirt cut out now. Turn it out. Flip it over. Make sure you're stretched this way. And then along here. That way you've got a manageable work area. When I measured my daughters, my older daughters, um, I measured it size of the waistband and then a little. And I actually think that that wasn't quite enough. So I cut it a little more. So this one, the shorter one, I'm going to cut down a little bit for the baby and then. Um, I'm actually going to leave it large. So hers is 18 and a half, and I'm going to leave it at uh, 20 and a half, just so that um, I don't have her available right now to test this out on because she is asleep. Um, before I get started, so I know you like to double check and make sure that. That fits her good and not too tight. Right. I'll get started with my sewing later on. And right now I'm going to clean up all this mess. And we will be back. Okay, so now we are ready to sew. Uh, the very first step is to get you a uh, coordinating or contrasting shade of thread. And as you can see up here, that's what I have done. And I've already got threaded under here as well, my bobbin. Um, now I'm going to put this on number six. It's a very simple stitch. I don't know what it's called. Now, all you do, two ends alike, okay? You're going to want about this much extra, give or take. So we're going to sew right down the line. 
put it in. Let's get it started. Go a little ways and then hit this and hold it down and that takes you backwards. And then go forwards again. Do the same thing at the end. Backwards and forwards. Then lift your pedal, pull it out, snip your ends. Pull a little extra bit of thread. Now we are going to switch over to a five. And it's a zigzag stitch. I like to use the middle one. You open this up like this. And you zigzag along that line to hold it down. Pull it out. Cut those threads off. my cat. I'm going to turn around and do the same on this end. So it'll look something like this. Now depending on the child, sometimes I would suggest having this on the outside of the band and sometimes I would recommend on having it on the inside. Nice and pretty back seam. Um, but if they have a sensitivity issue, it might be good to have this on the outside versus the inside. Now for the next part, you absolutely do have to use pins. So you take your waistband, pick which side you want showing, okay, and that's the side you want on the inside, okay. Whichever ones you're going to want to be showing, that's the one on the inside. Now this one is for my younger daughter and she doesn't have any sensitivity issues, so I'm going to put the neater end on the outside. Make sure you half it, you want that right in the middle. Pick which part of your fabric you want to be the front. And I think I want to use that other side as the front. Pin that out. Fold it, fold it again, right there. Okay, one of these is the back. You're right here. Okay. Go up about a quarter inch to a half inch. Just like that. Okay. Lift it again. Right? These, that's going to be your sides. So you hold. And you do the side. Okay. 
hold and side. Okay. Go over to the front. Find your middle. As close to it as you can. Now, you'll notice this doesn't quite. Now, you'll notice where before it didn't quite lay flat, I added in these little pleats, one halfway on each end and on the back, just to get it to lay flat. Alternately, you can also stretch the elastic and pin it and not have to do these little pleats. Um, but I like doing just the little pleats. So now, move those out of the way. Get it to where you can see good. We are still on that um, five. We're going to put it on the uh, a different five. We're actually going to do it on four this time. It is a wider stitch and that will help it to stretch a little better. So you put it in See that little mark right there. You kind of want that right on the line of your fabric and that way the needle will go on both sides. Just like that. And then back. I might have to go back over some of this. I should have put my pins a little further down instead of so close to the edge. Now you can go back and look and see if there's anywhere that you might not have gotten a good hold. Right here, for instance, I think I need to go back over that. Right there, I need to go back over that. For the most part, those are the only two little bits that I see. Now we can take out that pin. That was the reason why I was being careful there. And just go back over it. There we go. Back it up. Lift it. And trim. Now remove all of your pins. And trim off any little stragglers. on one side 
and then on the other. That is the tiny little circle skirt. You see that it stretches, that zigzag allows both the fabric and the elastic to stretch. One skirt down, one skirt to go. Now we're going to go through all the same exact steps for the second skirt. Get that ready. So we go back to the six. Line up our edges. One about that much. So about there. In, lower the foot. I'll show you. I think I'm going to go a little bit less this time. Alright, about the width of your foot should be a good spot. Go down, then we back it up, go forward again, and get to the edge, back up, go forward. Go back to that middle five stitch. Make sure that your needle is up when you do this. If you just change it over while it's down, it, it might hit. Might not, but it might. Fold it. Line up the edge. that it doesn't unravel on you. Trim it off. Okay, and there's the back. I did this one a little bit neater. Um, can't hardly even tell. Um, this one's going to be for my older daughter. And she does have a little bit of sensitivity. So we're going to make sure that this extra bit here is on the outside and not the inside. Turn it inside out. Fabric. See if there's a spot that you like better for front versus back. 
just for the front personally. Turn it inside out. This time I'm going to remember that lower, find your middle, that right there. That's how that should start looking. And now, like I said, there's two different ways you can do this. You can either stretch your elastic and pin, or you can put in little pleats. And I personally like to just put in the little pleats. Um, it works well. And I go to about halfway point. About there -ish. And just bring it over until it's relatively tight. And then stick my nails in. Do the same thing on this side. Go over to about the halfway point. there are other ways to do this. This is the way I do it. I find it the quickest and least painful way to do it. And for the most part, I don't really expect my little girls to wear any of these for too awful long. Tiny little plate. But um, the others that I made for my oldest, um, she's actually wore those for two years. So even though I didn't expect them to last long, they actually did. And that's with the regular washing. The only thing that's really been wrong with those is that they were cotton instead of a stretch fabric. And they have um, frayed and tore at the stretchy spots. 
There you go. Now you're ready to sew. We're going to move over here to the wider zigzag. Should just give it more opportunity to stretch. I like to start close to the back. You want that edge of your fabric to be very close to this little mark on your foot. And go forward and then go back a little. And then go forward. As you go, Kind of keep moving that fabric. Sometimes during the pleats, you'll need to pick up your foot just a little bit. To get it over that little hump. Done. Pull it out and trim it off. Take out all your needles, your pins, whatever you want to call them. and trim off all your little ends. And while you're doing that, make sure that you got good coverage. Don't want any gaps. And turn it inside out or right side out rather, and trim off any ends that you see here. And that's it. We're done. As you can see, stretches. Even along those little pleats. Now, if you don't like, you can always do a um, a more thorough job pinning. If you don't like this to be as with wob as I have it, but uh, it's not something that anybody's going to notice. Um, so unless you're trying to sell them, I don't really think that's a an issue. Um, you can also sometimes, if you don't like the way the zigs are, you can mess with your tension and that might help. The back and the front and then the little ones front and back. Alright, and there we have it. Two matching circle skirt outfits. So, their shirts are both from Target, the little eyelet shirts, and they have on the skirts they made. My big girl shoes came from Walmart. My little girl shoes came from an online store called The Big Hit Squeak. So, there we have it.